Lord, I've been traveling from place to place, singing your praises, trying to keep the faith. Lord, I've, I've been built, yes, I have, tried and scorned. Yeah. I can't stop now because I'm too far gone. I've got, I've got to, to keep on yeah. doing what I'm doing for the Lord. For the Lord. It's Darhi, it's based on my play called Darhi, The Lynching of the Till. And uh, I'm honored to be working with Rob on the hill to direct. Thank you very much, everybody. This is the uh, this is the world premiere for Darhi. And it'll go on from here to go to Berlin at the uh, International Cinema, uh, Black Cinema of Berlin, uh, for its European premiere. And uh, also we'll have it as the centerpiece at the North Carolina Black Film Festival in March. How you came to doing that play and that subject in that way with a one-man show. Back in 2005, I wanted to write a, a play that was based on um, Emmett Till. I wanted to write a documentary play, and uh, I started researching and uh, looking at interviews and documentation regarding Emmett Till's death, and it happened to be the anniversary of Emmett Till's death, the 50th anniversary, there in 2005, and I wanted something to, to give a little bit more light uh, to his death, but not only that, something that young people could see and understand and remember uh, by his death as well. Um, after it um, it premiered and I now toured around the country, I then shortly after met Rob, and in meeting Rob, um, we came to the conclusion that the play needed to uh, live on, but not just on stage. So uh, two shorts, two short films, uh, Empty Space and uh, Wolf Call, came out of the adaptation of Dargi. And after those two uh, short films uh, did, did wonderfully uh, around in film festivals, that's when we decided now it's time to really take the bull by the horns and make an adaptation of the entire play. Yeah, so it all started with the beer and just an idea. Uh, I had not known the Emmett Till story at all when we first met. Uh, I come from Michigan and it's not part of the curriculum really in schools. And um, when I came to North Carolina where I live now, of course a lot of people do know the story and its, uh, it's importance. Um, but when I met Mike, my first concept was I've got the framework for a neat short film about a one-man actor who's getting ready for his performance, but you don't know that, so you might think he's crazy at first, or he's talking to himself, and then eventually you realize he's rehearsing for his play. But then I needed content. I, I asked Mike for what should play he thought would be appropriate. He started with uh, Darky, the story of Emmett Till. And that's when I learned the story for the first time. And I was like, wow, this is way more than me just doing a short film for my own you know, uh, satisfaction. This story needs to be told in the process. And uh, Mike helped me through that process of telling the story of Emmett Till in the framework of that short film, that 12-minute 12, 12 film. Uh, and then we decided we would try to go a step further with Wolf Call, where he plays three Southern white men. Uh, the interview of William Bradford Huey with the two killers. Uh, that did do, I think it's fairly wildly successful in the film festival circuit. I had no idea what was going to happen. And um, I did get Best Short Film at the Hollywood Black Film Festival recently. And, um, and it's still on tour. It's been at 30 festivals. It's still going and going and going. And I love it. Um, I love the success of the film, but at the same time, it's, it's really the message that's the most important part. And that's what the feature film is about, is telling the full story that as Mike has crafted it and researched it uh, very deeply um, to as many audiences as possible. For Mike, um, how much of the dialogue that uh, Mrs. Till delivers is authentic? Because it's very moving. Um, is it from an interview with her, or did you write it's, that? It's over the course of several interviews that, she's, that she did over the course of uh, several interviews that she gave over her lifetime. She died in 2003, and so from, uh, from 55 there on, I dug into every interview, or just about every interview that she had ever done, ever done and pieced all of those things uh, together. Um, and therefore, that's what, um, what she said. And the original footage when you showed, um, the, what was it, the granddad? Um, most, most right. Um, describing it, he almost said it was like void of emotion. Uh, did the mother also have the same void? Or what, like she checked out as well when she described it? Did she played back out? 
Uh, the, the question was, um, when uh, Mose Wright, in the, in the actual footage of Mose Wright, describing what happened the night that um, Roy and J.W. came to kidnap uh, Emmett, he, was, he seemed to be devoid of emotion, and, um, and she's wondering if, uh, if Mamie Till had that same um, lack of, a, of emotion. Um, I think two things are at, at play there. Uh, the distance between 55 and you know, 2003 or so when, um, uh, when, she's, when she's talking or, or different time aspects of, of her lifetime when Mamie is being interviewed. Mo's right. You, know, you have to remember that at that point in time, TV was a new medium. A new medium. Mo's right probably had no idea he clearly had no idea that anybody like us would ever be watching that film. Would ever be, I mean, he's, for him, it's probably he's looking into some magical object, really, in describing what happened that night. And he's probably described it over and over and over again, um, to the point where that sort of shows his strength. It shows the strength of this man named Moses who, who sacrificed his life to point out Roy Bryant and J.W. in the courtroom, because you have to understand that after he pointed them out, he had to leave Mississippi and never was able to come back. Part of the, the big idea is to, of course, get in front of as many audiences as possible, so we'll spend some time on the festival tour. Um, and uh, we do uh, want to pursue all options. Um, uh, we'd love to have it uh, syndicated for uh, television. Um, we'd love to have it in, uh, you know, even, you know, Mike, Mike Wiley takes his show to classrooms and to uh, theaters all over the place. He's on tour constantly. So, of course, I had to book him for this, you know, months in advance. <laughs> um, so, uh, so we want to do something similar with this. The most important thing is just getting out there and letting as many people see as possible. But anything we can bring back to the work uh, financially um, would be stupendous and just helping distribute it further, you know. Um, and also to um, open the doors for, uh, we want to definitely leverage this and our short films, uh, the success they've had to leverage uh, you know, more work uh, in telling stories about African-American culture, history, and, um, and important uh, themes like this. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is that this is a story that needs to be told um, to, to the very young and remembered by the very old. And hopefully, through this film, and also through word of mouth, we will continue to, to keep the memory of Emmett Till. Not only Emmett Till, we have to remember that there were many lynched before Emmett Till and after Emmett Till. So the idea is that we must keep the memory of this history alive.